Hey everyone, welcome to my Ninja Gaiden 2 combat tutorial. I decided to stream this live on my Twitch channel because, uh, yeah, for some fun viewer interaction. So this is my favorite action game. Even though it does need some help as far as performance, I wish it was ported to the PC or a newer console. It is still, I think, one of the best action games ever made. But there really isn't too much content on how to play this game strategically, especially for people who can find themselves really struggling. And so I've decided to create this combat guide to help everyone along the way. So we'll start off with just starting off in chapter one. And the, I, the thing about this game is the combat mechanics are so deep and complex that it's ne not necessarily easy to pin down what is the right way to do things, what's the best way. But there are definitely some basics, I think, that will get people started. Um, this is obviously going to favor my style of playing the game. But uh, if you're an expert player and you feel like some of my advice isn't 100% expert level, I understand. This will hopefully get people at least started on a beginner level. So, I may end up dying a bunch of stuff here while I'm trying to show different concepts. So the first concept I want to demonstrate is the guard buffering. So let me explain what this is. So in Ninja Gaiden, when you attack, when you strike, actually I'll just kill these guys off and then explain. One left. Okay. So, when you attack in Ninja Gaiden, as you can see on the camera, right, you have the two main attack buttons. X is your light attack, and Y is your heavy attack, right? But they also have a lot of different functions beyond that. For instance, the, the X attack is faster, and it actually, I think, causes limbs to sever more often than the heavy attack. So you don't want to just use heavy attack all the time because it's actually not as strategically advantageous not only for combos but because the X attack will actually sever limbs more often than the Y attack will. But anyway, so when you're striking, this is the basic thing we need to learn right away, is there's something called guard buffering where instead of guard is L, so instead of striking and then holding L afterward, like this. What you want to do is hold L while you attack, pretty much all the time. Not, not you like, if you hold L and attack, you'll do a counter. But while you're attacking, you want to hold L. The reason why is because you're, you're buffering the guard, where even though the animation is, is him swinging, if you're holding L, he will go into a guard during certain parts of the animation much faster than if you were trying to manually enter it. So that's why guard buffering is the first thing we want to cover. It's the most basic thing, I think, that's going to take you a long way. So whenever you're swinging your sword, hold L. That way you're buffering your guard as much as possible. The next thing I want to go over, it's easier to show this without enemies on screen, is block stun canceling with your dash. So whenever you're getting attacked, so you're holding guard, you're getting your sword hit, you can either counter, continue to guard, or you can dash out of it. The thing is, is that whenever Ryu gets hit with an attack, he has an animation where he kind of falls back and is a little bit stunned. That's called block stun, like in fighting games. However, if you dash during the initial attack, there's a bit of a window, before you get two block stunned, but if you dash during the initial attack, you can cancel out of that block stun, which is very important. So throughout this uh, tutorial, you're going to see me doing this. When I hit, when I'm getting hit, I'm going to dash. And there's different ways you want to think about dashing away. You can either dash away from them and then counter attack. You can dash through them and attack from behind. You can dash over to here and there. You know. So not only are you going to want to dash, but you're going to want to thinking where you're dashing. But that's very important. So rather than just holding L and getting beaten down, 
uh, right when your sword gets contacted, dash away or dash somewhere. So those are the first two things to keep in mind. So we'll continue on this way. The next thing I want to teach you is charging... I can't I don't even know what this is called. I think it's called ultimate attack. So when you hold Y, you charge. Like this. When you're in the midst of a fight, this really isn't a very good idea for the most part. But it's very useful when you have times where enemies are coming at you, like this. And then you need to make contact, and once you do, you go into this super animation here. Okay, whoa. It's actually paused. Okay. So, another thing I want to teach you learning is how to kind of track enemies and manage the camera. That's a big obstacle for people playing this game, right? My advice to you is the camera, it's not a DMC style lock on system. The camera kind of will sort of lock on enemies for you. But a lot of it is you need to start learning how to just set up the camera and then play within that setup. So this isn't like Dark Souls or more modern action games where you sort of are like Legend of Zelda where you Z-lock and then you have this perfect view as you move around and your camera moves with you. That's not how it works in this game. It's actually more old school, something like Devil May Cry 1 or like Resident Evil games and stuff where you need to sort of position the camera in a good position and then you just need to track enemies within that camera position for the most part. And if you press R, if you press R, the camera will always jump behind you. Always. See? This? The thing is, the camera is a very tactical thing too, because there are certain inputs. There are certain inputs that are easier to hit at certain angles. So rather than trying to hit really awkward, acute angles on the stick, sometimes it's better just to sit the camera in the right spot and then you can hit just like a, a straight direction. So let me give you an example here. See, like, that position is fine. The better you get, the less you're going to actually need to probably move your camera around a whole bunch. Try to play within the camera as much as possible, and then set it up strategically. Like here, I'm going to set it up like this. Another trick is using your ninja stars, shurikens, to track enemies. That's actually something I do all the time. Where instead of trying to pan the camera, just let your ninja stars tell you where they are. That's something I do all the time. So for instance, where are they? Ninja star, there you go. And just follow your ninja star. So let me kill off most of these and I'll show you another technique. I just need to leave one alive. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the severing system works in this game, which is very important. So in this game, I mentioned that light attacks tend to sever limbs of the enemies. Whenever you sever an enemy's limb, that makes them instantly vulnerable to a dismemberment attack. And the way to do the dismemberment kills is to get close to them and press Y and you will go into an animation. So let's sever a limb with X. I'm trying not to kill them, you know. Okay, his limb severed. So we're gonna get close. Why? Yeah. And there's certain, you'll see that second guy, if they die, you can't sever their limb, or you can't do the, uh, it's called the OT, when you get close and hit Y, and go into like this, glory kill basically. I think this is where Doom got their glory kills. I think it is from Ninja Gaiden because it's very very similar how that works. But you're gonna want to do that as much as possible because you also gain lots of points which 
are very useful for buying weapon upgrades. So you get close, why? Here's another trick. See, I told you there's a bit of delay on the... Oh, I didn't mention this in the tutorial, but if you ever need to instantly heal, heal or switch weapons, use the pause menu, not the D-pad menu. Because the, the D-pad menu has like this weird delay on it where you can get hit and killed before the menu pulls up. Whereas the pause menu just pops up immediately. So always hit the pause menu if you need instant switches and stuff like that. So another thing I want to show you is using your ninja star, which is actually a very useful tool. Like I said, one use is using it to track where people are. Another is you can use it to cancel the lag on your attacks. You notice that? See that? How I'm like canceling the end of my animation. So you don't want to uh, use this all the time because the ninja star itself has its own lag. However, there are certain moments, especially when you land from an attack like this, and you land, like after the Zuna drop, a ninja star is really good because it, it'll it uh, come out faster than a sword swing. Let me show you. Or if you're doing a heavy combo. Basically, whenever you're recovering from like a heavy attack, it's another useful tool you can use. Like that, right there, that was perfect. Perfect example. So I did this dismemberment on him, and then to recover, ninja start. Just getting an item. So Nimpo is very good. So if you press Y and B together, you shoot your Nimpo, and those are the what those uh, three flames under my health bar indicate. And there's different types, but I feel like the first Nimpo, when you upgrade it all the way, is still really good, so I end up using it the most, to be honest. But there are a bunch of different ones. But this first one is really good. So let's also talk about... ...using your, your attacks sparingly and timing them well. So if you play fighting games like Virtua Fighter, Tekken, or... Dead or Alive, especially since Dead or Alive is made by Team Ninja, you'll know that just mash, you don't want to mash out your combos. The reason why you don't want to do that is because you're wasting your hit stun, where you are preemptively wasting your hit stun. You want to maximize that, so that's why you want to sort of keep your combos on a nice rhythm, because you can, let's, let me sh explain what hit stun is first. So, you notice when I hit him, how he's reeling back, that's hit stun. And I didn't want to waste that. So, for instance... Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. If you just had mashed, 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 mashed your combos, what's going to happen is you're going to miss all these opportunities to do these glory kills, these OT kills, and you're also going to put yourself where you're going to get uh, hit and flanked because what's unique about Ninja Gaiden compared to a lot of other of these types of games is that the enemies all attack you relentlessly. They don't care. They don't sit and wait around for you to finish your combo. They will attack you mid-combo. They will attack you just relentlessly. So that's why you can't just do these long, flowing combos whenever you want, because they will get interrupted by people flanking you and stuff. So the idea is you want to earn your combo by clearing the area. So you want to have, kind of you want to basically hit confirm most of your attacks. Also when you get severs too. So you like hit, do a, for instance, let's do this combo. That's one of my favorite combos. It's XX, delay, I think it's, yeah, okay. So it's three X's, but you have to kind of delay them, and then you go, press Y. There, that's a really good one. There's lots of different combos in this game that are all really useful. That's one of them because it tracks and it has a nice little area in front of you. The thing about, I won't go into too many specific combo things because this game has tons of weapons with tons of different combos and they're all going to change based on the, the availability of your upgrades and weapons. So just, uh, if you go to details, 
think, or techniques. Yeah. So if you press Y in the options menu, it'll show you your combos. And I suggest experimenting with them. Anyway, so the next thing we, we want to talk about, why everyone attacks me, is enemy prioritization. Because you have to think very strategically in this game. You can't just swing on your sword all day and, you know, let it rock. You need to think about how the enemy formations, kind of like in a shmup, how the enemy sh enemy formations are creating hitboxes and creating attacks. And my golden rule is if there's any sort of projectile enemy, especially in the Xbox 360 version, I like these wizards you can see, kind of, it's fuzzy, but those wizards in the back, kill them immediately. Take out the projectile weapon enemies first, and then deal with the other enemies afterward. See, I got a sever, so let's kill him. Okay, so those are done. Now the next step is, these are only three enemies, but you also want to think about how you're being surrounded by the enemies. Basically, you never want to be totally surrounded because you're going to get your combos interrupted all the time. So what you want to do is you always want to create sort of a space where there aren't enemies in a, in a direction. For instance, here, I'm not really surrounded, but I'm going to kind of move towards those candles over there to give myself a nice amount of space and try and line up. You basically want to line up your enemies as much as possible, right? You want them in a, in a cluster together. You don't want them spread out, causing mayhem. And sometimes positioning is much more than getting the kill. Because it's easy to kill enemies in this game. The trick is getting the position to where you're able to take them out one by one. And so sometimes if you're getting swarmed, it's best to like just take a few hits on one guy, kind of stun him, and then reposition to get into a more safe situation where you're not having people surround you. So that's another technique, is just line people up. Like, watch, these guys are all lined up. And look, oh, I missed it, damn it. But anyway. Also, don't ever fight in clustered quarters or places where the camera's all funky. Just don't do it. There's an example in this stage I'll point out of a stairwell where I tried to fight a group of enemies once, and it was... I was taking way more damage than I needed to. So you notice I got hit by a ninja star when I was charging. Certain attacks will break that, and certain attacks won't. So like, like a small little shuriken won't. But if they hit you, it will. So you're not like invulnerable when you're doing those charges. But things that would normally stun you like this, those small attacks don't. You actually want to try and hit that when there's a group of them, because you want to do a bunch of splash damage. That's another thing too, is when you do these OT kills, that actually tends to create splash damage to other enemies where you can chop some limbs in the process. So another idea is whenever you have a group of enemies, always try to go for the sever in the middle because you're invulnerable and you could do splash damage to the enemies around you. Like, watch. And he's nice and stunned and set up for another kill. Sometimes they'll get out of it. You are a little bit invulnerable. That was another important thing to mention. So in this game, let's watch what happens if you just get too guard happy. This is not going to be fun, but watch. Especially severed guys. So guys that are severed... Like this guy, watch. They'll do these suicide grabs on you. Yeah, see? The thing is, if you mash like no one's business and you mash early enough, you can usually break the break the attack. I better kill him, because I don't want to die. But yeah, whenever you get grabbed like that, mash like no one's business so you can hopefully get out. Sometimes you can't if it's too late. And those do a ton of damage. It's like right here, we want to take out these purple guys. And sometimes you gotta position yourself. 
to where you're not totally surrounded. Like in the corner here, at least I have the corner to protect my back. You can also do that. I feel like it's a little bit cheesy, so don't do that all the time just because it kind of ruins the pace of the game to always like cornered, corner spam people like this. The thing about this game's combat system is there is some cheesy stuff you can get away with. Like, watch this. One being that whenever there's these glowing balls, you get an instant charge on those. Well, a pretty instant charge, especially if you fall down. Like... Like this. Sort of. You have to kind of do it in a combo, but you'll get an instant charge if you do that. See the splash damage? So what I usually do after those... You want to be careful with flying swallows too. It's an important technique, so I'll tell you what it is. If you jump and press in a direction and Y, you'll do what's called a flying swallow. And it is a very good attack, like this. You can decapitate people. It's basically invulnerable to most enemies. It's really safe. And so one thing that uh, people who don't really get the combat system might do is they might just use flying swallow all the time. That's not going to get you anywhere in boss fights, and the further you get in the game, the less and less that's going to work. Some enemies just straight up block it, and then you're kind of putting a stun while they beat the shit out of you. So, you can get away with it early on, but you want to avoid using it too religious, like, you know, too heavily. Instead, what you want to do is use it tactically, especially on enemies that are vulnerable to it, like arrow people, and not all the weapons have it either. It's a... Some, some weapons have the flying swallow, some don't. Like, the staff doesn't have it. Another lesson is always kill projectile guys. I've had some playthroughs where I thought, okay, I'll just run away from them. Those projectile guys could snipe you from like half of the stage away. It's pretty ridiculous how far and how insistent projectile weapon enemies are in this game. So you just have to kill them. Don't ever leave them alive. Another good thing to keep in mind is you need to learn your enemies' attack patterns and where they're vulnerable during the attack patterns. Because they will manipulate you just like you manipulate them. For instance, let's watch this guy's attack pattern. Also, you want to learn them to counter them. So let me show you a counter. So if you hit Y while you're being attacked, you'll counter. Like that. Or X. Y or X. They're two different ones with different properties. I usually use X because I think it's a little safer. I think Y is more damaging. X is safer. It's sort of the trade-off there. Another neat trick just for navigation is doing this dash jump thing where you dash jump land dash jump land you just move faster this is also actually really really good in, in many boss fights so it's another very important technique actually so now we're gonna try and find the mage guy there he is you notice the enemies are not waiting around if you go for these long flowy combos while people are around you you'll just get interrupted but if you get those kills you can't be interrupted they're invulnerable so that's why you want to get them as much as possible see we talk to limb take them out get close with Y There we go. Still grab me. That's why you, when the, the more enemies are around, basically the quicker and simpler you want your attacks to be. That way you can still block and adjust without getting uh, interrupted and attacked.
I just want to show that off. See, canceling the attack with the ninja stars. So another thing, just some other basic principles I want to go over is, even though this game has lots of nice flowing combos, one one habit you want to break immediately is beginning the combo and not hitting anything. So let's say you see this guy over here, this dead guy. You don't want to do this. Swing, hit nothing, and then attack him. You want your first attack to hit them. It sounds simple, but it's actually a, a really bad habit that I had for a really long time that I need to break. The reason why is because you're much more vulnerable middle in the middle of attack, right? Especially in this game, it's not Bayonetta, where you can just block whenever. So if you start here, and someone swings while you're whipping, you're just going to get punished. That's why you always want to hit them with your first attack, rather than, you know, whipping and then trying to follow up with the second attack. And here are different weapons, so let's talk about the staff. I think the staff is actually a really good weapon because it, it isn't as cheesy as the other weapons and I think it's a little more difficult to use but once you know how to use it, it's very strong. So I'll show off some ideas with the staff. Remember, do that charge. You gotta wait for him to get close. Get the splash damage. Then I use the star to kind of track where they are. And you have to just mentally track where they are too. You have to learn to picture what's going on sometimes. Like, for instance, I'm pretty sure there's a guy to my right. Yeah. So as you're attacking and stuff... Oh, okay. Another thing that I should mention is when you're doing these glory kills like I did on that guy, what you should be doing during that time is swinging the camera around to take a look at what's going on. Like, watch. So let's spin the camera. Try and position the camera to where you need to see while you're doing the attack. See? That's also going to be really helpful. Oh, some guy's still alive. Do you ever see a random ninja start fly out of nowhere? Stop. Because they will chase you. This game, the enemies do not back off, they do not go away. They will chase you through the entire stage if they have to. For the most part, unless there's some kind of obstruction, but they will chase you a very far way. A very long way. So just kill them while they're by themselves rather than waiting until they can pile up. Because the more enemies there are on screen, the more uh, risk it is, right? I thought that guy was dead. You see how I got splash damage there? You see how I'm dash canceling out of the attack? Look, I'll let a guy, not this guy. If they have a limb, kill them. Immediately. Do not block. If they're, if they're missing a limb, instantly kill them. Do not block, because they will grab you and do those suicides. So these guys all are missing limbs. Just walk up and press Y. You'll kill him. Okay, this guy's not missing one. I just so I'm, I want to show this concept off. Watch when I get hit. Okay, see how I like took. Uh, they're grabbing me, of course. There. Oh, now they're just fucking grabbing me. Stop grabbing me, you assholes. Okay. I'm trying to show off a concept here. Okay. See how I blocked and got out of that hit stun. I'm trying to make him not grab me. See? Whereas if I just regularly grab, no, of course it's gonna, I mean regularly block, I'm gonna get some hit stun. But I think if I hit him with this star, he's less likely to grab. See, like that? But watch, let's make him do it again. If you time it just right, you can dash out of that hits done, which is what you want to do.
So I think we're, we've covered a lot of the the essentials here. So I guess let's just finish by going over some of the meta stuff. One another uh, thing to keep in mind is you don't want to get too dash too dash happy because you know the dash is really good. But if you're just dashing around all the time. Oh, well, I guess I should mention this. When you're running, you have different attacks than if you're holding still. And usually, the running attacks are pretty large, somewhat slow, but they offer pretty good coverage. But if you're always running around and trying to do these in the middle of boards, you're just going to attack. So what I've been trying to work on is instead of always running and doing dash attacks on people, like this, what I've been doing is running up and then letting off the control real quick and going into a standing attack. So, here's the dash. Here's the standing. Right? And as simple as you just let off the control stick, there's a little bit of a timing to it. Let off the control stick and attack. Work on that as well. That's another important concept. Rather than doing dash attacks all the time. So, yeah. So let's just talk about some meta stuff. My advice to you is never buy any items. Never do that. Instead, always spend your money on weapon upgrades. Because you're going to gain items in the levels as you play. And the big part is, is it's like Devil May Cry, I believe, where when you buy items, they become more and more expensive. And in the final fight, you're going to need to buy a lot of items but you're not going to usually have a whole lot of money because you need that for weapon upgrades and stuff. And so if you save your money for just weapon upgrades, you'll have cheap items that's going to really help you in the later game. So, And I usually upgrade my sword first. I usually get my sword nice and upgraded really early because I usually use the sword in boss fights because it's a very versatile boss fight weapon. But that's all down to preference what you want to use. Some weapons are just better than others, but they're all pretty dang good. And depending on the situation, you know, each weapon has an ideal situation to use it in. The sword's just a really good all-around weapon. The staff is really good for crowd control and like large groups of enemies and stuff like that. Then there's other weapons too, like the scythe. That's very, very good for heavy heavy opponents that don't usually get stunned by the sword and uh, most other weapons, but they'll probably get stunned by the scythe. And the scythe is just a good weapon anyway. And then the best weapon in the game, I believe, is the double katana, where it basically does everything really well. It's good in boss fights, it's good against people, it's good against bigger enemies even, it's just really good. So get that double katana nice and upgraded too. And then the talons in the next stage are all very good. So yeah, any questions in the chat before I finish this tutorial? This is on the Xbox 360. So the original Ninja Gaiden was released on the Xbox, but Ninja Gaiden 2 was released on Xbox 360. You get the bow in stage 2, Dingo. And there's some techniques you need to do with the bow. I can, I can actually show you here. So, the bow, you'll need to do this. Where you dash and fire, dash, fire, dash, jump, firing, like this with the bow. It's not good with the shurikens, but it's good with the bow. And you do it against flying enemies. And the reason you do that is it will automatically track the enemies in the air. It will auto-target them for you. And so when you get in like sec in level 3 where you have a lot of spammy flying enemies, the way to deal with that is to uh, jump and uh, dash, jump, fire. And it will auto-target them. And usually in those sections there's usually a dead ninja with a bunch of arrows in him, so stick close to him so you can get more arrows.
Yeah, definitely, Dingo. Any other questions? Well, awesome. Well, okay, thanks everyone for tuning in. Let me close the stream.